When we made our McDonald's spicy chicken McNuggets, you were praise hands emoji. Then we ran out, and you were streaming tears emoji. Now they're back, so you can be grinning face with sweat emoji. Order ahead on the McDonald's app. And get money mouth face emoji with two orders of crispy, irresistible 10-piece McNuggets, spicy or classic, for just $6. Limited time only. Prices and participation may vary. Cannot be combined with any other offer. Single item at regular price. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Marilyn Lands has been involved in Alabama politics for a whole lot of years. Over 20, I'd say. Things have changed since she started out. Back then, Democrats were running the state legislature. The state's deep red now. And local elections were so ad hoc that when her neighbor decided to run for office, Marilyn was like, sure, I'll run your campaign for you. Her neighbor was a Republican. She was a Democrat. But it didn't matter. She liked the guy. His name was Mike Ball, which was great for PR stuff. All our signs were baseballs, and we really played with that theme. We have Mike Ball cookies. I have a, a wonderful photo of my son, uh, who's about four years old, I guess, at the time, uh, with you know a huge Mike Ball baseball cookie. <laughs> it was really kind of just a lark. I'm curious, as you were running that campaign, how did you and he and voters talk about an issue like abortion? Like, did you talk about it? No, we didn't. You know, at that time, we had Roe versus Wade. We had that for a long time. So it just really didn't come up back then. CNN is now projecting that the Democrat, Marilyn Lands, is going to win this special election that was going on for a state House seat in House District 10. It's no this week, Marilyn is going to be sworn in to take her old boss's place in the Alabama House of Representatives. She actually won that special election by 25 points in a district that Donald Trump won by one percentage point in 2020. Like I said, things have changed. It's notable because she made reproductive rights a centerpiece of her campaign something you don't often see in deep red Alabama. The Biden-Harris campaign has called her win a major warning sign for Trump, saying that Alabama voters, quote, know exactly who to blame for restricting their ability to decide how and when to build their families, and they're ready to fight back, end quote. You just won your old boss's seat. You won as a Democrat? Yes. You won as a Democrat who talks about abortion a lot. Yes. If you could go back in time until like 2002, Marilyn, that she'd have her boss's old seat and she would win it based on abortion, would she have believed you? No, because I never would have foreseen Roe versus Wade being overturned. I could not have imagined that back then. Today on the show, how Marilyn Lands did it. I'm Mary Harris. You're listening to What Next? Stick around. This episode is brought to you by Discover. When it comes to your finances, Discover wants you to know they are the credit card that is always there for you. With 24-7 U.S.-based live customer service, everyone has the option to talk to a real person anytime, day or night. Yep, that means no more waiting for, quote, normal business hours just to get a hold of someone. We are talking real service from real people whenever you need it. Get the customer service you deserve with Discover. Limitations apply. See terms at discover.com slash credit card. This podcast is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Most of you listening right now are probably multitasking. Yep, while you're listening, you're probably also driving, cleaning, exercising, or maybe even grocery shopping. But if you're not some kind of moving vehicle, there's something else you can be doing right now, getting an auto quote from Progressive Insurance. It's easy, and you could save money by doing it right from your phone. Drivers who save by switching to Progressive save nearly $750 on average, and auto customers qualify for an average of seven discounts. Discounts for having multiple vehicles on your policy, being a homeowner, and more. So just like your favorite podcast, Progressive will be with you 24-7, 365 days a year, so you're protected no matter what. 
Multitask right now. Quote your car insurance at Progressive.com to join over 28 million drivers who trust Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. National average 12-month savings of $744 by new customers surveyed who saved with Progressive between June 2022 and May 2023. Potential savings will vary. Discounts not available in all states and situations. It is impossible to talk about Marilyn Land's victory without talking about her second pregnancy. It's the kind of personal experience that is so raw. Lands says it was not obvious at first how it was going to fit into her campaign. You know, my, my media person said, we certainly want to tell stories, but we don't have to tell your story. So if you don't want to, you know, we don't have to put that out there. And I said, no, I want to. It needs to be told. It needs to be heard. I hope it will help people understand this issue better. This was more than 20 years ago. Lance was already the mother of a four-year-old, Jordan. And then she found out she was pregnant again. When I would take Jordan to daycare, uh, there were the daycare was very near the elementary school. And there were these two little brothers who I would see walking home most of days. And often they'd be holding hands. And I just wanted that. I wanted my son to have a little brother. Hmm. So we were overjoyed. But because she was an older mom, Lance had to get an extra level of prenatal testing. And when the test came back, they told me that the baby had trisomy 13, meaning total catastrophic damage, brain, heart, kidneys, all kinds of abnormalities. It must have gutted you. Yeah. I, and I didn't even know that there were disorders like this out there. I mean, because it's they're so rare. Yeah. Um, So it wasn't something that had ever crossed my mind. So this, you know, joy we were experiencing and this excitement about building our family all of a sudden just went so south, so wrong. And I was, you know, just in shock and and cried for days and days Um, and talked, of course, with the doctors and even talked with my priest. What were they all telling you? They were recommending termination of the pregnancy. They were all telling me that this was the right decision. All of the doctors were adamant. And actually, I didn't really have an abortion in the true sense of the word because I was induced and gave birth. Oh, my gosh. We held the little baby. We held this tiny creature that weighed five ounces. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so sorry. I know. Um, I hope, and like I say, I'm very much at peace in sharing this story now, and I hope it really helps people to understand what what the realities of what's happened are and how families are being caught. And families have every right to build their families the way they want. You know, when Roe v. Wade was overturned back in 2022, you were running for office, the same seat you just won. And you didn't win that election, but I wonder if we might go back and talk about how you look at that race now. Do you remember as a candidate the June day when Roe was overturned? Like, do you remember thinking about it as a candidate? Oh, absolutely. And when the Dobbs decision came down, of course, that changed our platform and our messaging. Because before, we kind of had three pillars. We had health care, especially with my background in mental health care. Education, of course, and um, what I call economic well-being, because North Alabama excels at economic development, but we still have so many families that are struggling. And once that decision came down, we started messaging around abortion. We didn't win. We came close, um, and we were closest to flipping a house seat in the entire state. Marilyn Lands talked about abortion in 2022. But she didn't share her own story. At that point, I didn't feel compelled to share it. I did talk with people on the campaign about it. I don't think we really even considered sharing my story then. But what happened this time is when I saw Alyssa Gonzalez on the Diane Sawyer special on the brink, she was the, the only person in that story from Alabama. Now, what my son had was trisomy 18. 
He was not gonna live for the past a year. Thank you. He had two holes in his heart, no nose bone, and his brain was not developed, it was mush. I didn't, I even asked if I could just be induced, no. They said there's nothing that they can do, that I had to have it. I reached out to her and we went over to meet her and her family and there were so many similarities. Alyssa Gonzalez was 23 years old when the Dobbs decision led to Alabama banning virtually all abortions. Her story resonated so much with Lance that she asked Alyssa whether she'd participate in a campaign ad with her. They told their abortion stories together. We were both to have second sons. We both had trisomy genetic defects. We both were told that these were non-viable pregnancies. We both were told that was a risk to our lives at this point. And I was able to get the care I needed. I had all three doctors recommending termination. Um, they were pretty adamant about it. This is just what needs to happen. And I was had my own doctor. I was in my own you know, hospital, my own community. Alyssa, though, on the other hand, had to travel 500 miles to a place she'd never been in her life to be seen by a doctor that she had never met, to go to a clinic which was overwhelmed because all this had just happened and people were scrambling. And it was a horrible experience for her. And I believe that Alyssa prior to this was pro-life. Huh. And because of this and because of her fear of anything like this ever happening to her again, she underwent a partial hysterectomy. And so she will not be able to have future children. Wow. Wow. That's so stark to to take such a conclusive step. It just it, it makes me want to cry that this is what we are doing to women in this country. Yeah. And the... The dichotomy, the difference, the contrast in those two stories of 20 years later, she wasn't able to get the health care that she needed and that we've gone so far backwards. I mean, this is not progress. We're going back, back, back. Back in 2022, did you ever consider talking about your own story or was it more like, oh, this is private. I don't want to. There's like public me and private me. No, I did consider it. In fact, I even went so far as to write an editorial and shared it with some of the people that um, are active in politics here, and they discouraged me from doing it. You know, you're so strong when you talk about this, and um, I'm, I'm surprised you didn't tell it anyway. I have to say, Mary, it crossed my mind. But, um, you know, I, I was very new to campaigning, and it had changed so much since we did Mike Ball's first campaign. It's absolutely a different world. And I found that one of the things in this race, this time around, I felt a lot more confident. Yeah. Yeah. In in the messaging, I felt a lot more confident overall about doing this thing. And there's also been this time there was just completely different energy in the campaign. How would you describe that energy? It was a sense of real excitement before when I'd knock doors and say, can I count on your vote? And most people are very polite and they'd say, yes, I'll vote for you. But you didn't get a real sense of conviction. But this time they were like, I got you, girl. Come in. Come in my kitchen. See where I've circled this date on my calendar. Wow. You know, they would hug me. I mean, there was just this positive energy and this people sharing not only their own stories, but people just sharing how fed up they were, how embarrassed they are to live in the state of Alabama, how they're looking for something different. And even Republicans were telling me this. I'm wondering if after the Alabama Supreme Court made their ruling about IVF. They ruled that frozen embryos counted as children. For a a brief period of time, fertility treatments were basically suspended in Alabama as the government tried to work out what this meant for people. I'm wondering if that ruling impact, like if you felt that on your 
campaign and how? I did feel that on the campaign. And one of our clinics, one of the three clinics, the Mobile Clinic, has still not resumed services here. But I think we had already seen this this different kind of energy that I talked about on the campaign. But I think the IVF ruling may have really been the thing that brought more Republicans in. I think Alabama has become ground zero for attacks on reproductive freedom and women's health care. And we've seen it start in Alabama and then spread to other states, like when we implemented the trigger law here. And now it's spread across the South and and even further. Was Alabama the first state with a trigger law? Yes. Yes, absolutely. This year in 2024, I think that People were speaking up and speaking out, and they are fed up with the direction our state is going. It seems to be one thing after another. I've had several Republican people sit down with me and say, I don't know what who my party is anymore. They used to be about small government, and now they're they're legislating everything, what books we can read, our school curriculum, contraception, how we build our families. It's getting crazier and crazier here. I think people are ready for something different. They're ready for change, and they want Alabama to move forward. When we get back, now that Marilyn Lands is about to get sworn in, what can she actually do? When we made our McDonald's spicy chicken McNuggets, you were praise hands emoji. Then we ran out, and you were streaming tears emoji. Now they're back, so you can be grinning face with sweat emoji. Order ahead on the McDonald's app. And get money mouth face emoji with two orders of crispy, irresistible 10-piece McNuggets. Spicy or classic for just $6. Limited time only. Prices and participation may vary. Cannot be combined with any other offer. Single item at regular price. Ba-da-ba-ba-ba. Imagine you're a fly on the wall at a dinner between the mafia, the CIA, and the KGB. That's where my next podcast begins. This is Neil Strauss, host of To Live and Die in L.A., and I want to tell you about my new podcast, To Die For, a real-life spy story. All these girls were sent out into the world, and they were told, try to meet important men, try to attach This is a Russian model agent telling me about women sent out as agents to seduce men with political influence. The war in Ukraine is also being fought by all these girls that are all over important cities. For the first time, a Russian-trained seduction spy confesses her story of seducing men for their secrets and sometimes their lives. If you want to kill your target, you just seduce him, start having sex, and then he's very vulnerable so you can kill him easily. From Tenderfoot TV and iHeart Podcasts, this is To Die For. Listen for free on Apple Podcasts. Your win kicked off a lot of chatter about what your victory meant. I think a lot of people said, oh my gosh, a Democrat winning in Alabama in a district that Trump won. He won by one point, but he still won in 2020. I think one of the interesting things about your victory here is that post-Dobbs, Democrats have been winning ballot initiatives about abortion, and it's been put out there as like, this is a real an issue we need to focus on. But I think there's been a question about whether that will translate to Democratic politicians. And I say that because a lot of voters have been splitting their ballots, like voting for abortion as an issue, but then supporting Republican candidates. Given all that, what do you think it is that allowed you to win as a Democrat? I think a couple of things are at play there. One, I think that people are waking up to the fact that state and local races are where change starts. And I also think my race had so much Republican support. I mean, the majority of it was from Democrats, but I had a lot of Republicans, a real significant amount of Republican support. And I think the Republicans here just really misread the tea leaves. Yeah, your Republican opponent in this race really didn't want to talk about abortion at all, like actively avoided speaking about it. Yes, and said that he wasn't hearing about it from anybody. But I was hearing about it, and I was knocking Republican doors. 
And I think they felt safe to talk to me about it because my story was out there. Yeah. You know, some analysts have looked at your win and said it's interesting, but maybe it's not determinative in any way for Democrats because you're representing an area with a lot of college graduates. Like, it's the kind of place that makes sense for Democrats to make gains. I wonder what you'd say to someone with an analysis like that. I think they're misreading the tea leaves. I think they're being short-sighted. I just, this issue has really, really resonated. And it's, Mary, it's almost like there's a vibration going on. People are just, they've reached, I think, a tipping point. You know, I don't know what it holds for November, but I think that this is going to be on people's hearts and minds when they go to vote. You said you really want to reach across the aisle and listen to people. How do you do that in the climate we're in right now? Like, how do you foster trust between the parties? Um, and I, I ask that, you know, it's so interesting. Your, your old boss, the Republican who used to hold the seat, he put it really well where he said, like, I think what we need is we, we need a stronger minority. Like right now, the minority isn't strong enough to challenge the supermajority at all in Alabama. And that means their ideas are worse, basically, <laughs> because they don't have enough pushback. Is that how you see your role or do you see it differently? I see my role, first of all, about building relationships and really getting to know people before I'm there to share where my head is. I want to know where they're at and why they're there. I want to know the reasons why they support or don't support something. You know, 22 years ago, when I ran Mike's first campaign, we were friends and neighbors. And people... We're glad to be friends and neighbors with people that are different than they are. And I say all the time, it always comes down to love versus fear. And I think people are just very, very afraid of change at the moment. And yet change is a good thing. And diversity is a good thing. We know, you know, mental health wise, we know that people who have a diverse support group are healthier and happier. We know organizations that have a diverse workforce, are more effective. In Jesus' words, we're to love our neighbor. And that's all our neighbors. That means everybody. That's not just the people that look like us or live in our neighborhood. It's everybody. It's interesting you're focusing on diversity because my understanding is that the governor there just signed into law a bill that restricts DEI initiatives, for instance. So taking aim specifically at diversity. Yeah, that, that's another huge step backwards for our state. Diversity rocks. <laughs> uh, but it makes us all better. And um, But people are, are just afraid right now. And I, I hope to be able to, to cut across some of that fear because in many ways it's unfounded. Did you say you're about to literally go be sworn in like today? I um, will be sworn in today when the session opens, right after the gaveling. What do you think your first day on the job is going to look like? First day on the job is tough for anyone, but uh, you're you're doing a big thing. You know, I need to find my parking spot <laughs> and figure out where my office is and be onboarded, all the kinds of things that have to happen when you start a new job. So I'm heading on down there just to meet folks down there and get settled in and be ready to go to work. I'm very excited about it, but everyone keeps telling me that it's going to be like drinking from a fire hose. Representative Lands, I'm really grateful for your time. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you. I hope we can keep in touch. Democrat Marilyn Lands was just elected to the Alabama State House of Representatives. She represents District 10 in Huntsville in Madison. And that's our show. If you're a fan of what we're doing here at What Next, the best way to support us is to join Slate Plus. It's our membership program. Go on over to slate.com slash whatnextplus to sign up. What Next is produced by Paige Osborne, Elena Schwartz, Rob Gunther, Anna Phillips, and Madeline Ducharme. We are led by Alicia Montgomery with a little boost from Susan Matthews. Ben Richmond is the Senior Director of Podcast Operations here at Slate. Shout out for all the work he does on our ads. And I'm Mary Harris. I'll catch you back here next time.
When we made our McDonald's spicy chicken McNuggets, you were praise hands emoji. Then we ran out, and you were streaming tears emoji. Now they're back, so you can be grinning face with sweat emoji. Order ahead on the McDonald's app. And get money mouth face emoji with two orders of crispy, irresistible 10-piece McNuggets, spicy or classic, for just $6. Limited time only. Prices and participation may vary. Cannot be combined with any other offer. Single item at regular price. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba.